Hello everyone, Ronnie J here from Internet Radio Station. And in this video, I'm going to show you my SAM Broadcaster desktop layouts and why I lay them out the way I do. Here, we're looking at my desktop A. And I have both my decks uh, on the very top here, deck A and deck B. Uh, the decks are like uh, turntables, but in this case, they play MP3s and whatever mp3s you put in the queue here or what you have in your playlist will go into these decks they will play then after their first song plays then it fades out and then it then the second song fades into deck b when the song in deck b fades out then the next song in the queue goes to deck a and it begins to play so it's fully automated and uh, i have my clock here which I don't really need, but I like it there because I think it's pretty cool. Um, there's a clock here also, but this gives me a tab on what time it is. In the uh, upper right hand corner, I have my encoders window. Now, this shows me, uh, gives me a visual as to whether my encoder is running. If you see uh, an error that says uh, status connecting or there's an error, then uh, you've got a problem. So this is a way to visually uh, see if your encoder is connected and it is streaming and if it is not like it says here error disconnected then you need to start investigating the possible scenarios for your encoder not connecting could be that your local internet connection has been lost and the way you verify that is to uh, attempt to go to a website or several websites such as Google or Yahoo or any website to see if you can reach them. If you can, then it's not your internet connection. It could be your host streaming provider. They may have a problem. And I've experienced issues with some host stream providers who don't guarantee a 99.9% .9 uptime, and that's part of the problem. They may be doing maintenance, they don't tell you about, and they knock your server offline. You go to your stream host account, you log in, you may find that your server is turned off. So you will have to manually turn it back on. So having this encoder window here is always nice as a great visual to see whether or not uh, you're streaming. And right now, the reason why mine is showing a status of error and disconnected is because I know that my server at my stream host account is turned off. I have my voice effects window here and uh, when I come on the mic live, I need to have my sound effects uh, right next to this and so I also load some music beds so when I'm talking live, I can have some music playing in the background. Uh, this uh, sound effects uh, window here is pretty cool. You have some uh, sound effects, let me play a few for you. For example, you have a handgun, you have uh, a girl screaming. Glass crashing, a shotgun, and uh, you can go to several pages of uh, sound effects here that you can use. I also have uh, voice tracking, which I really like because uh, voice tracking lets me make a quick recording and drop it down here in the queue. Uh, for example, if I'm broadcasting or if I'm playing music and I'm live and I want to say something and I don't want to say it live, I can pre-record it here and drop it in a queue and walk away and do something else. For example, let me give you a demonstration of how I would use this. Right now, I know that um, the last song that played is a song by Bruce McKenzie called Chillin'. And the song coming up is one by Acoustic Alchemy called Jamaica Heartbeat. So what I could do here, I can click on voice tracking and do recording like this. You've just heard Bruce McKenzie in Chillin'. Coming up is Acoustic Alchemy in Jamaica Heartbeat. Then I'll stop that. Then I can come here where it says store and I can say quick cue. And it places that voice track down here. So if I were to play this, you've just heard Bruce McKenzie in Chillin'. Coming up is Acoustic Alchemy in Jamaica Heartbeat. So that's how you use uh, voice tracking. Pretty nice feature there. I also have my request window here on uh, Deck A. 
so I can tell listeners if I have a request coming up. I have my cues so that I can see what is uh, up and coming and so I can talk about it uh, if I go live. I have my history so I can tell what songs uh, have just played. And I have my playlist window here, which I'll go into more detail on in another video. But it's nice to have it right here where I can see it. And I also have my statistic relays graph because what that does, this gives me another visual as to how many people are currently connected to my stream and listening in. Looking at uh, desktop B, I also have my encoders here. Uh, it's just another way of uh, looking at uh, whether or not I'm connected or not. I also have my statistic relays over here. And again, this simply shows me how many people are connected to uh, my station listening in. I also have my playlist here. I have my event scheduler and I have my event log. The event log shows you everything that has been going on with the Sam Broadcaster. For example, you can see here that it shows that uh, I loaded the song to Deck A called Help Yourself by Andre Delano. It gives the time. It shows that voice track that I recorded being loaded into Deck B and there's the time that happened. Also, if you see errors here, when you first install a SAM broadcaster, the way you get rid of those errors, and, and most people miss this, is that when you do the installation, let me show you here. And we go into the config area here, and we go to station details, right here. Show station details in audiorealm.com, export additional station information. Well, all that information right there is going to appear right here whether or not you belong to Audio Realm or not. So it's going to report errors. So what you do is, I highly recommend that you untick these. And all those errors will go away. And click OK. And your event log will stay nice and clean. And once you make any changes within Sam Broadcaster, you want to come up to File and then do a Save Configuration. Or else when you log out of Sam Broadcaster and log back into it again, you'll have to do everything over again. On my desktop C, I have my auxiliary decks here and my PAL scripts windows. I simply love PAL scripts and I'll do a separate video to go to PAL scripts. PAL scripts can automate every facet, every facet of your radio station and it's a good thing to learn PAL scripts and I'll give you some free PAL scripts that you can use and you'll see those on the website and obviously I will show you how to use them for your radio station. Again, I place my AUX1, my auxiliary 1, and auxiliary 2 near my PAL scripts uh, so that I can see what they're doing. These auxiliary decks respond based on the PAL scripts. I also have my Q, like you saw on uh, desktop A. I have my FTP log. This lets me know if the FTP log is working. In other words, if it's uh, connecting to my web host, and that's why it's important that you set it up in your config. Let me show you that. If you go to config and HTML output, right down here where it says upload files via FTP, you want to make sure that the information entered in here is correct. And I'll show you another video on how to set up an FTP connection to your web host. And so, but you want to make sure this that this is correct. And if it is, then this here will verify that Sam Broadcaster is indeed connecting to your web host via FTP. Event Scheduler. Event Scheduler is a tool within Sam Broadcaster, a very powerful tool that lets you schedule events. Let's say, for example, you have uh, several shows that you run uh, every day. And let's say between a certain time frame, you just want to play, uh, say, smooth jazz music, say, for four hours a day. And then in uh, another four hour slot, you might want to play uh, mainstream jazz. In another four hour slot, you might want to play a funk. Or you may have a, a talk show allocated or pre recorded for a different time slot. Well, you can create an event scheduler that will tell Sam Broadcaster to automatically schedule and run those events for you. And I have my queue over here, like you saw on desktop A. And my history, again, is over here on this desktop also because it shows me what uh, has been played and I have my statistic relays graph and when this is running when I'm connected to my server 
I can see the number of people that are currently listening and the maximum number of people who have been listening throughout the day. So this is how I set up my Sam Broadcaster desktops and uh, it's very efficient. It works very well for me. And as I progress through the Sam Broadcaster course, I may repeat some of this information here, but just ask to keep you sharp on it. But this gives you a basic overview of how I lay out my Sam Broadcaster desktop. This is Ronnie J, Internet Radio Station. Thank you for listening.